I'm Dr. Deepa Sundaram, a professor of Hindu studies at the University of Denver. As a dominant caste South Asian American from a Hindu background who is cisgendered, able-bodied, and an assistant professor at a prominent institution in the U.S., I hold several privileges, including those of class, caste, and profession. I also navigate the challenges of being a brown woman and the daughter of immigrants in predominantly white spaces. Award-winning Dalit author and anti-caste activist Yashika Dutt writes, quote, caste is the invisible arm that turns the gears in nearly every system in the country, end quote. While she is referring to India, I show how that invisible arm continues to work in the U.S. My remarks today will focus on three main points. One, caste is a social, cultural, and political hierarchy that continues to proliferate in South Asian and Hindu communities, both within and outside of the Indian subcontinent. Casteism is cultural violence that must be addressed through civil rights protections. Two, the roots of caste practices in the form of varna, literally class or category, and jati, birth group or position, are found in many Brahmanical Hindu texts, such as the Vedas, Laws of Manu, and Bhagavad Gita. Hindus can and do reject these practices. To do so ethically requires acknowledging caste-based practices as part of the tradition and seeking to build more inclusive communities. To suggest caste is not part of Hinduism is deeply problematic, negates the experiences of caste-oppressed groups, and most importantly, is not supported by Hindu Orthodox texts. Three, anti-discrimination policies that include protections against caste discrimination do not harm Hindus specifically or South Asians in general. Rather, they offer an important corrective to bring civil rights protections in the U.S. in line with the protections already afforded to other oppressed groups and show that privilege and oppression are intersectional and not zero sum. Caste is a social system that is de determined at birth and assigns hierarchical roles to various communities within society. Caste is established and given credence in pre-modern Hindu texts and other religious communities have adopted discriminatory caste practices as well. Today, caste operates within South Asian communities of all religious backgrounds, and it continues to constrain political, economic, social, and cultural practices, including elected office, managerial positions, marriage, meal sharing, and friendship. In my reading of a recent lawsuit, two Hindu professors filed against Cal State University for adding caste to its anti-discrimination policies it seems contradictory that the complainants both wish to argue that caste is not foundational to Hinduism and that Cal State does not have the right to define Hinduism. If one believes caste is not part of Hinduism, then why argue that Cal State's policy banning caste discrimination maligns Hindus? Moreover, Cal State's decision to add caste to their campus-wide anti-discrimination policy was prompted by the testimony of Dalit activists and students, scholars of caste, and allies of caste-oppressed groups. After the policy was approved, Simranjit Singh, executive director of the Inclusive America Project housed at the Aspen Institute, and I, wrote an op-ed for Religion News Service, explaining why this was a critical first step to dismantling caste discrimination in the U.S. Here is a brief excerpt. Though we think of caste as an Indian question, it has long been a part of the South Asian immigrant story. In 1920, a US Army veteran named Bhagat Singh Thind applied for citizenship after serving in World War I. Thind's lawyer argued that Thind was a Caucasian and therefore should be granted citizenship. Thind's lawyer tied this claim to Thind's dominant caste status stating the caste system prevails in India to a degree unsurpassed elsewhere. With this caste system prevailing, there was a comparatively small mixture of blood between the different castes. In other words, Thin's claim to US citizenship rested on his dominant caste identity and its parallels with whiteness. The US Supreme Court eventually rejected the argument saying that he did not appear white and therefore couldn't be considered for citizenship. But his attempt to claim whiteness, in part based on his caste identity, shows us an important linkage between caste and race. Both are socially constructed mechanisms for cultural power. It also underscores how long caste has been an operative category of identity in the US. Critics who have opposed Cal State's move, some of whom are, who are affiliated with groups with dominant caste leadership, 
and a history of caste apologists and Hindu nationalist views argue that non-discrimination policy should not consider caste because the policy would then only apply to one group, South Asians. They further claim that calling attention to caste inequities actually risks creating negative stigmas and endangering an already vulnerable Hindu minority. While it is true that white supremacy harms South Asians, this duplicitous stance obfuscates how power and privilege work. It's possible to discriminate against people who share your South Asian identity while also being marginalized by others for being South Asian. Discrimination is not mutually exclusive or zero sum. Recognition of casteism in the South Asian diaspora is important because of what it signals to dominant caste groups. They might be racialized and minoritized by virtue of their ethnicity, but they can still have privilege and oppress others based on other identities they hold. In conclusion, extending civil rights protections to caste oppressed groups does not negate or amplify the harms Hindus suffer from white supremacy or other forms of hate. Rather, it, it affirms the core values of civil rights as human rights. Protection against caste discrimination recognizes the discrimination that Dalit and caste oppressed groups face as a civil rights issue. Extending these protections underscores the US's commitment to protection against discrimination in all its forms. Thank you.